get everyone be agent day here. We're going to look into this Intel NOC 11 compute element. Now this is the follow up video of the unboxing of the NOC 11 compute element. Now if you haven't checked that video out, I'll put a link in the description below so you can actually check that video out after this. Now I won't be trying to regurgitate the information from that video. Now that I actually spent a bit of time on this computer here, I'm going to give you the results as well as my thoughts of this computer and it's actually quite interesting. Now first off, I want to make a disclaimer. I want to also thank Intel for sending this particular unit for me to actually do a review and have a look at it. And after I've actually done this review, I will be sending it back to Intel. Now, I also like to say is that I've actually done a review video of the Intel Nook 9 Pro, and that's about, so about a one liter size sort of chassis, and it does have a graphics card. It was made for the professionals. Now, that one did have a Nook 9 compute element as well and the compute element on the NOC 9 was about let's just say probably about two about, about that sort of size of it so just minus a little bit of it but it's about that sort of size so it was quite large still and now with the NOC 11 compute you know it's this size it's like a business card size it is amazing look how thin it is and look how big it is it's crazy how small they've actually made it it's probably about a third of the size um, of what the NOC 9 compute element is. So if they've made advances, normally you may make a little bit of advance, like half a size. This is like a third of the size. That's crazy. And how light it is, it's insane how light it is. So they actually made a big jump with the NOC 9 compute element to the NOC 11 compute element. So that's crazy there. So, and it's just nice just to hold that this thing here. So this thing actually has the processor, RAM, as well as the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi 6 on built into this little card processor here. So that's a really interesting sort of product. That is. And this is also where it actually becomes very interesting because the fact that you can just put the, you actually buy this in three different parts. So you've got the, the processor, which is the compu, compute element, as well as the board element, which is the motherboard. And then you've got the chassis element as well. So this is just the outside of it. So the board does come with the ports. Now, what's really interesting is there is a few different boards and there's also a few different chassis. Now the one that I was given here to, for review is the one which is a rugged one and it's also the one that does media capture as well too. So I was a little bit confused in my unboxing video and now actually I, I, was, I might as well go through the quickly through what the ports of this capture video is. So first off, we actually have the power button in the front and then we've got two USB type A ports. Now there are one which is USB 3.2 Gen 2 and there's also USB 3.0 Gen 1 as well too in the front, which is up here. And then at the back there, you've actually got two ethernet ports. Now they're on different chipsets there, which is quite interesting there. And we then got two full size HDMI ports. Now they're version two. And then we've got four USB type A ports. Now the two of them are 3.2 gen two ports. And then another two more, which is gen one ports here, which is kind of interesting. And then at the top here there, we've actually got two HDMI ports. Now one goes in and one goes out, which is pass through. And that's really for the capture side of things. If you're actually doing capture of video, which is kind of like the capture cards there. So that's kind of got that built in. And then you've got audio in and audio out as well too. So that's that kind of interesting there. And they've got another few more, which were actually smaller ones is what I'm thinking is going to be really the main key to it in a way. So what I say is, and there's of the compute element on the Nook 11. It is the 11th gen Intel Core. And the one that they've given me is the i7 1185G7. So it actually has vPro in there as well, which is great. So you can actually manage this in a big business. They actually have a vPro infrastructure there. So that's kind of nice there to actually see. Now what's really interesting is, is also that the chassis here, and I have a look at the other ones. Um, just a little bit disappointed that being the 11th gen Intel, it should actually have, or what I expected to have was Thunderbolt 4, because that's something that the Intel have got. Uh, and they really didn't that incorporate that into the chassis or the board designs. Um, so it's a bit of an interesting that they actually didn't put Thunderbolt 4 uh, in there. So that's one of the big things about the Intel side of things, and especially with the 11th gen, it has gone to 
Thunderbolt 4 support. So you got hopefully faster speed support there. All right, so this is one of the things. The NOC 11 compute element comes with a 90 watt power adapter. Now this is a power adapter that looks very similar to like a laptop. It's probably just a laptop power adapter here. And I actually did run the tests for the power for this to see how this runs. When this computer is on idle, it draws around about 10 watts. So that's pretty low, I've got to admit. And when this computer is running on 20% low, so that's pretty much average juice. And this computer was only drawing around about 15 to 19 watts. So that's not bad. That actually saves a lot of power, I have to admit. And when this computer is on 100% load, so I'll put this one on maxed out. So that's RAM, hard drive, and the processor. And it pretty much was drawing around about 49 to about 52 watts. So that's not bad at all. It actually doesn't use much power at all, which is pretty much like a laptop. It actually uses around but less, a little bit less than a laptop. So that's really decent, this Nock 11. So this does save a fair bit of power, uh, especially this little computer here. It's so small, it's ridiculous this one it does use bugger all power I've got to admit that is quite amazing now I'd also tested this computer to see how hot this thing ran I actually took the actual base cover off just so we can get straight into the element and just see how it is now when I took the measurements my ambient temperature was 25 degrees Celsius and so I'll put this computer on 20% low so that's again average use so tasks like office productivity work streaming videos as well as surfing the web and pretty much the hottest area on this compute element was 45.5 degrees Celsius. That's just pretty good. And with the fan noise, hit a maximum of 34 decibels. I also put this compute element at 100% load and the hottest area on this compute element was 66.5 degrees Celsius, but most of the other parts of it was pretty much around about 55 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 38 decibels. So that's not bad. This NOC 11 compute element does pretty well on heat. I was expecting it to hit around about 75 to around about 85 degrees Celsius, but it only did about 65 degrees Celsius, and that's straight onto this element here. Um, so that's not bad at all. I'm actually very surprised by how well it handled heat, and also, as you can see, it actually saves a fair bit of power, so it actually doesn't do that bad at all. The Intel NOC 11 compute element is configured with an i7-11, 85G7 with a base clock speed of 3 gigahertz. So this computer has been running on pretty much max load for over an hour. So that's the processor, RAM and also the hard drive, pretty much on 100% load. And I can see that the actual processor speed here is anywhere ranging between 3.3 gigahertz to about 3.9 gigahertz. And it pretty much just jumps up and down between those and this is after an hour, so it's actually doing pretty good. So there isn't any thermal throttling for the base clocks, which is great because the actual speed is far higher than the base clock speed, but there is a little bit of turbo boost thermal throttling there. I performed the benchmarks for this NOC 11 compute element. Now this one's configured with an i7-11 85 G7 with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. And I'll put up the scores for all the benchmarks. Just to, you know, the very first 11th gen Intel Core laptop I review, which was an MSI, and that actually performed really good. Probably one of the best 11th gen Intel Core laptops compared to the rest of the other Intel Core 11th gen laptops I received later on. And that one actually ran really quick but it was really hot. It was so hot you could barely touch the computer while the computer was running on 100% load. Now, what's really interesting is that this NOC 11 compute element, pretty much the actual results of the performance is about the similar on par with that MSI laptop. And this doesn't run as hot as well too. So that's pretty amazing, I've got to admit. That's pretty good. After looking at all that, I was a little bit confused on where this really sits in the market because we can't really put a graphics card in one of these things. It does, all the boards don't have a graphics card sort of slot to it. And so you can't really put better graphics in it and you can't really change out this without the RAM. Um, it is not slottable. It's pretty much one unit itself. So what I actually thought of is that this and the board 
is really good to integrate to other systems. And that's I think that's where it really shines. Not in a sort of system like this knock sort of little small thing. Because I know that there's other OEMs that actually produce a little bit and they can actually put discrete graphics in that one there. Whereas this one, you can't do it from Intel. And the other ones do have other better support selections there. Now, what I, like I said, I think this is gonna be used for integrating to the other systems, like for example, TVs for digital signage. Um, media capture systems there um, that actually can do a little more than that. Uh, I, I don't know, it's actually really interesting to see where this can be actually integrated into, uh, being this sort of small size, and I think that's gonna be good, because quite simply, ARM is not ready to be integrated yet to other things there, because we haven't got a lot of software that actually works on ARM yet. So, ARM is still very new, uh, whereas this x86 is still very mature, and that's probably where it comes into play, is the software still is able to help you out. So. I actually like to hear what your thoughts are, what you think could be integrated into one of these things with the little board and one of these things into there. Uh, because you can swap the swap out and then bang, you're off to the next level if you really want to upgrade it as well too. So, and just see how small this thing is as well too. So it's gonna be interesting there to see. I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, or even to support my channel, smack that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I do try to upload a new video every week. And it also, I do held a little bit of a membership and there is a join button if you want to actually join my little club there. And of course, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.